perspective on politics because President Trump has never shied away from touting this market's rise as a sign of his success at restoring confidence in the economy. The stock market has smashed one record after another. Our stock market has reached an all-time high today. The stock market is at an all-time high. We're just hitting another record right now on the stock market. We, you see what's going on with the stock market. They know, they know that we know what we're doing, so it's going up at record clips. Are there political risks to this? And what could a potential government shutdown mean for the fragile markets? Here to weigh in, former DNC Deputy Press Secretary Jose Aristamuno and Immediate Director for Campus Reform Cabot Phillips. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, Cabot. Um, do you think it's irresponsible for a president to tout the market's rise and eight trillion plus created in stock market value since the election? It's certainly dangerous to do that because anytime you are touting uh, success as strictly as something that's of your doing and it's something you don't have complete control over, it can blow up in your face if it starts to go poorly. But this is nothing new. Let's be honest. Any time in American history when the markets have been humming, the U.S. president comes out and tries to do a victory lap on it, saying that it's their uh, doing. But let's also look back just a week ago. The markets were breaking records and Democrats were saying, oh, well, this has nothing to do with Trump. It's the economy of Obama still. And now a week later, when they stumble <laughs> a little bit, those same people are saying, see, like we told you, President Trump is to blame for this market. It can't go both ways. It's got to be one or the other. I think it's not that easy, though. It's a little bit of middle ground on who's to blame for this. Yeah. Jose, do you think Trump, President Trump is going to own it on the way down or just dismiss it? What do you think the reaction is going to be as we continue to follow this? Of course not. Any sort of failure for that has to do with pres uh, President Trump, he's not going to tie himself to that. Look, the stocks are going to come up and, and come down. That's, that's part of it. Uh, but you know what? I'm not surprised that, you know, a week, you know, a week ago in the State of the Union, he tried to say that, to his credit, you know, the economy was doing well. Now the stock market is dropping, and then all, all well, of the a sudden... Well, the economy is doing well. Well, no, the economy is doing well, but talking about the stock, mar stock market specifically, it goes to show that President Trump doesn't understand basic stock market uh, principles. So, look, I'm not surprised that, that, that this is happening. Um, let's see what happens. I know that we're close to a government shutdown, perhaps, but um, I don't know. It, it gets... It's tricky when it comes to the president. All right, let's talk about that, that potential shutdown, Cabot. Fox News is told that House Republicans plan to vote today on a bill that would fund the government, so we're still kicking the can down the road here, until March 23rd. There will be an additional sweetener for defense spending, but nothing on immigration attached to it. Do you expect such a, a continuing resolution, if you will, Cabot, to pass? Well, based on the meeting that happened last night, it does appear there's going to be just continuing to kick it down the, the road. Uh, Schumer said that they would not support a bill unless there were more long-term guarantees. We'll have to wait and see. But from just a media and PR perspective, I don't think this looks good for either side, but especially not good for the Democrats. Uh, you know, the last government shutdown happened because there wasn't a deal made on immigration. You mentioned the State of the Union. President Trump essentially came out and conceded we're willing to make a deal. We'll give... Uh, citizenship status down the road to those dreamers, which is where the, the holdup happened on the last bill. And, and so it's going to be hard for the Democrats to push the narrative of we want the government to keep running, but the Republicans are unwilling to compromise when President Trump came out in front of millions of people and said we're willing to compromise. So it'll be interesting to see who takes the blame. I don't think the market's going to take much of a hit one way or the other. It didn't really, really? go down after the, after the last uh, shutdown. We didn't see much of a difference. Things kept going along. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. There's a little bit more volatility now, but I, I still think the market uh, won't take too much of a hit if there is a shutdown. Oh, that, that's interesting. Jose, I'm not going to make you respond to that. I know you don't watch the market. <laughs> that's not your sort of thing. But I was reading an, um, an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, and one of the quotes were, were, as the market returns to normal, Americans could just be sick of winning. What do you make of that? Look, I mean, let me let me say one thing and, and respond to to the other guests on the on, on the government shutdown. This isn't a Democratic or a, or a Republican issue. I mean, the, the Democrats want to work with Republicans to make sure that we keep the government open. I think we're going to keep the government open. But you know what? The issue here is that we're going to keep it open till March, and then March we're going to have this conversation all over again. I'm just tired from both sides that we continue we continue to doing this this continuing resolutions and not get a long term solution. Right? Enough with this. Yeah, that's kind of how it works in D.C., unfortunately. Jose Cabot, thank you very much Thanks for waking so up with us. All right.